Okay, welcome back uh, after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at um, the fifth guidepost and recognizing the leading of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're looking at how the Holy Spirit uh, reveals the plan and the purposes of God to us. Uh, we were looking at, uh, you know, just before we went for the break, we saw how the Holy Spirit uh, speak to us, uh, speaks to us, uh, how does he reveal uh, God's plan and purpose for our lives. Uh, we looked at a few areas. We will look at this in much more detail when we are uh, starting the publication, um, receiving God's uh, guidance. Okay. Uh, now we'll move on. How do we know that it is the Holy Spirit speaking to us? Because sometimes we can hear other voices as well. You know, the other voices can be, um, you know, our own voice or uh, our, you know, what we desire, uh, the voice of our own desires, our will, our plans, our intentions, our motives. Then there can be the voice of uh, Satan as well, who is diverting us away from the plans and purposes of God. And then it can be the voice of God himself, the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us. So how do we know it is the Holy Spirit speaking to us? Uh, you know, uh, one way that we can know it's the Holy Spirit speaking to us is the Holy Spirit always glorifies uh, the Father, always glorifies um, God. Okay, I don't know if it's... Um, here in this verses that we read, but, um, uh, you know, the Spirit of God always uh, will speak uh, in a way that will gl bring glory to um, Jesus, okay? So that is the greatest test that we can know. So Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit is speaking to us, and it's not just our own uh, will, or it's not our own feelings and our own uh, emotions. Okay. So, in brief, this is um, how to recognize the leading of God's Spirit. Um, any questions on this, on the fifth guidepost? Anyone has any questions? So Sanjay says, when an unbeliever is successfully operating in a particular area of gifting, which spirit is uh, guiding them? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, it's God who has, uh, uh, you know, uh, given him the skills and the talents and the abilities, even though he does not recognize that it's the true and living God. So it is God who is called into that function. God has given all of us gifts, uh, talents, abilities. You know, the word of God says that uh, he sends rain both on the righteous and the unrighteous. He's created them. So he's given each one of them their own gifting, their own skills, the area of their own uh, expertise. But if they're using those uh, gifts uh, or their specific function in the wrong way to fulfill wrong desires and motives, whether it is uh, fulfilling the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the the pride of life, we know that it's not the Holy Spirit, but it is the evil one who is guiding them and lead, leading them. So we see that, you know, we have leaders who are, are not serving leaders, but more bosses and manipulating people and using their positions and powers for their own vested interests. We know that it's not the Spirit of God that is leading them. But yet we also see other people who... Um, are walking in integrity and serving in in integrity and honesty. And we know that they have a right spirit uh, in them. Yes. So does that help, Sunday? Oh, thank you for your question. Anyone else has any questions? So I hope that even as we're just looking at all of these guideposts, it's not just something that you're listening to in class. You're uh, uh, you know, you're thinking about it and you're trying to also see, you know, how and using all of these guideposts to understand uh, what is God's calling, uh, your function, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, what is God's plan and purpose for your life. For those of you who are struggling in that area, for those of you who are already thinking that, hey, I'm in God's plan and purpose, I'm in the right function, maybe it's a good time to analyze and see if you are in the right place, uh, you know, the right function that God has called you to and using the gifts that God has uh, yeah, given you and blessed you with, okay? Uh, so we'll move on to the sixth guidepost, recognize the circumstances. You know, very often uh, God leads us and guides us through um, uh, uh, into things that he has planned and prepared for us by orchestrating uh, circumstances or by setting up circumstances and situations in your life. It can be either by opening doors of opportunity or taking you to the, uh, leading you to the right people, uh, maybe the right church, uh, the right, um, uh, you know, uh, prayer group or, you know, uh, right contacts, meeting people, uh, somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, pushes you in a certain direction, uh, some, somebody who is, um, you know, moving in, in a specific way. Uh, sometimes it can also be when God closes a door, uh, you know, he's orchestrating things in your life. He doesn't want you to enter those doors. Sometimes it can also be God opening doors. It can also be sometimes uh, God creating an opportunity uh, for you in an unexpected, uh, you know, uh, season of your life and, you know, unexpected, not season of your life, unexpected time, and you are not expecting it, but God is just orchestrating uh, situations and opportunities so that, you know, he wants you to get into his plan and his purpose, okay? Uh, before we move on, Vicky asks, what is the quickening of the written word? Okay, so, you know, when I was praying about um, uh, my calling in, you know, in 12th grade, when I was praying, God asked me to get into full-time ministry, and, um, you know, Full-time ministry was not something that I envisioned for myself. It was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something professional. And um, I was, you know, when God, I was praying, uh, my Sunday school teachers basically said, you know, in 12th grade, you need to make a decision. What next? So pray, ask God, God will lead you. So in a spring, um, I clearly sense God telling me he wants me to come into full-time ministry and get into Bible college. And for one week, I basically uh, kind of, you know, uh, argued with God, can I say that, uh, you know, I was like, no, God, you know, I want to do this. And of course, I love you. I love to serve you. I'm already serving in Sunday school. I'm teaching children. I'll continue to do that, but I want to do this in life. And uh, so the next day when I asked God, what do you want me to do in life? Again, the same calling. And for one week, it happened like that. But the end of the week, you know, I realized that I can't argue with God. You can't fight God. So I just said, okay. Uh, but I knew I was not going to get into full-time ministry. I knew that I was not going to get in, into Bible college. But I just said, okay, God, just to end it, you know. And um, up to 12th grade, you know, um, to make the story short, I just didn't get into, I just applied in one college where my sister was studying. She's a topper in that college. So everybody knows her, including the principal. So I was very sure to get into that college. But the first, second, third list came out. My name was not there. My sister tried speaking to the principal. He said it was too late. My father tried all of his influences. Nothing worked. And there was there were two shocked. They said, hey, why is nothing working for you? So then I remember going, running to the restroom and crying out there in secret and say, God, why did you do this to me? You know, I'm going to waste a year. I've not applied in any other college. And one year is going to be wasted. Imagine I'm going to sit at home. And then God is saying, remember, you said you're going to Bible college. And I was way too shocked because I completely forgotten about it. Uh, I didn't even, because it was not something that I'd made a commitment. I completely, you know, it was out of my mind. And it's like, oh, you know, and then I realized, let me not fight God because it's not going to work for me. So I said, okay, I told my parents, but then I needed a confirmation. And uh, I went to church that uh, Sunday it was very, very grieved, very heavy in my heart. I said, God, give me an answer. And, uh, you know, the preacher spoke and he said, you can't serve two masters. You either serve God or mammon, you know. And he said that and that word came like a rhema word, just hit me. And God was telling me, you can't serve two masters. You can't do secular and serve me in your case. Uh, you know, you have to choose one of the two. And that's when, you know, when the word came, it hit me. And, uh, you know, that was a quickening of the written word from scripture. And I said, God, you know, I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'll do what you want me to do. 
I'll get into full-time ministry and I'll go to uh, Bible college. So that is the quickening of the written word. Okay, so God leads us uh, through his word. He speaks to us whether it is area of sin, whether it's a, a job that we need to go get into. I know people, you know, praying for a job and God shows them scripture passages, reveals uh, uh, his plan and purposes. So in various areas of our life, small or big, God reveals through his word. Did that help, Vicky? Okay, so um, coming back to recognizing the circumstances uh, and how God, uh, you know, orchestrates circumstances in our lives. You know, God orchestrates these things around uh, our situations, around us, uh, to guide us into what he has. Okay, so let's uh, read Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, please. Can one of you please read Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9? Can somebody read that? But for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. Amen. Thank you, Lucy Samuel. So here we see that, you know, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. So God's eyes is scanning the whole world. He's looking for people whose heart is devoted to him, uh, those whose heart is loyal to him. Um, and God says, you know, if your heart is committed to me, then I'm going to exert my strength on your uh, behalf, Okay, which means God saying, I'm going to lead you and guide you. Uh, so one of the areas where God exerts his strength on our behalf is, you know, he orchestrates circumstances, he brings about situations in our life in such a way that will favor us, that will open us up to or set us up for God's plan and his purposes for our life and set us up for God's, um, for the next season that God has a portion for us in our um, lives. Okay, look at what Psalms 37 verses 23 and 24 says. Can somebody read that please? The steps, the steps of a the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen. Thank you, Lucy Samuel. I think there was some problem with the the internet in our Bible college. So anyway, thank you, whoever's from the Bible college, the student who's right to read. Thank you. So here we see that the steps of a good man or a righteous man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his ways. So God delights in the way of a good man and a righteous man. Isn't that uh, so soothing, so nice, uh, so consoling, so encouraging that God delights in our way he delights in the way of a good man or righteous man the steps of a righteous person are ordered by god okay so somehow in some way you know god um you know he orders our step um, <clears throat> so that we can fulfill his plan and his purpose in our life now how does god do this you know we can't necessarily fully explain it <coughs> sorry uh, we cannot necessarily fully explain that, um, but we know that God's hand is ordering our steps. Uh, so if you or I are people who are committed to living righteously by, uh, you know, living righteously, uh, you know, we can have this guarantee, we can have this um, assurance, this confidence in our heart that our steps are being ordered by the Lord. Amen. Okay. Uh, and it also says that, you know, though we fall, we will not be utterly cast down because the Lord upholds us with his hand. So how does God order our steps? He orders our steps through circumstances, through situations in, the li in, in our life, um, uh, through the influence of people uh, uh, around us. And uh, God is able to make sure that, you know, we put our step in the right place 
uh, where he wants us to go, where he wants us to put uh, our step so that he can guide us in the way, uh, guide us in the path that he wants us to go. So sometimes we might make a mistake. Uh, that is when we fall. It says, though we fall, we will not utterly be cast down, which means we can make a mistake. We can take a wrong step, but that's not the end of everything, okay? Um, because when we go back to God, we repent. God is going to enable us uh, to get back on the right path and he's going to continue to order our uh, steps. Now, for example, you know, you're about to make a decision and you face a closed door. It does not mean that God wants you not to progress in that area. Okay. It simply means that there is a better way of doing it. Okay. Or sometimes when God closes a door in our lives, it's, it, it could also mean that we are misusing the function and the gifts that we are in, or we are being lazy, or we are being complacent, or we have been we're taking things for granted. That's when God can even remove things from our life and say, you know, hey, you're wasting uh, my uh, my time. Uh, the resources, the the, uh, the the skills, the talents, the expertise that I have given you. So God can remove that uh, from our lives. He can simply shut the door in our lives. It does not mean that God is not going to enable us to continue in that specific function. Uh, it simply means that there is a better way to do it, uh, you know, or uh, bring us back to our senses in, thing, in seeing how we have wasted our time, our resources, uh, God-given time, ability, and resources, um, or we've taken things for granted, we become complacent. And uh, or it could also mean when God shuts a door that he's opening another door, uh, which is a better door for us that he wants to step in for our advancement, for our uh, betterment, okay? Aman says, many times people fall and He's not likely, he's, and he not like to stand, so God is helping him or not. So you mean many times when people fall, they don't want to stand up? Is that what you're trying to say? They don't want to get right with God, they want to continue in their life of sin or in their life of self-pity and guilt or shame. And then you're asking, is God going to help them or not? Is that what you're saying, Aman? Okay, so uh, sometimes when people fall and they don't want to recognize their sin, they want don't want to repent, then God cannot do anything, you know, because God has given us the free gift of moral choice to choose, like Adam and Eve. You know, God created us in his image and God created us in his likeness, which means that God is uh, without sin, he created us without sin. God is uh, does not die, he created us never to die. God uh, has a free will to choose, he gave us a free will to choose. God has a mind uh, to think, he gave humans a mind to think. So that is what it means, God created us in his likeness and image. So it also means that God has given us a free will to choose. Of course, you know, he told Adam and Eve, you shall not eat from that tree but it was their choice and they went ahead and chose. So God does not treat us like puppets. He's given us the free will to choose. So we have the free will to choose whether we can get up and ask God for forgiveness and get back on the path that he has for us. But if you're not, you know, um, uh, we'll see in, in an instance, uh, 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 you know, uh, from an example in the Bible, we'll suffer the consequences of it. But does God totally abandon us? No, because he cannot do that. He's a gracious, compassionate, merciful, loving God. He will love us. He will care for us. But yes, you know, uh, it can thwart God's plans and purposes for us. We cannot move ahead in God's plan and purpose, but still God loves us. He cares for us. He'll do what is required of us, but we cannot progress in God's full, perfect, beautiful plan and purpose for us. And we will suffer the consequences. There will be frustration, pain, suffering, and all of those things. Uh, we'll look at it in a bit with an example if we have time when we look at the next, uh, oh sorry, in the same situation, in the same um, uh, guidepost, we will look at an example and then you'll understand, okay? Um, 
So yes, we will move on. Um, so how does God order our steps, you know, through circumstances, through situations in life, through the influence that comes around us, and God makes sure that, you know, he, uh, we put our step in the place that he wants us to put our step in and move us in the way that he wants us to uh, go, okay? So if uh, God um, opens the door for us, you know, it means that... Um, that is, uh, you know, that's the right door to enter in. And it, again, does not mean life is going to be one whole joyride, you know, where you sit down you just experience God's favor. God does everything for us. Angels will come and minister. Angels will do everything for us. No, it means when God opens a door, it means more responsibilities, more challenges, but don't be afraid. Okay, don't be afraid to step into the doors and the opportunities that God is opening up for you it could uh, mean those great opportunities mean greater responsibility greater challenges but remember when there are greater responsibilities greater challenges greater the measure of grace greater the measure of favor greater the measure of divine enablement and divine empowerment amen so don't be afraid um you know, and if but if you're afraid and you don't step into what God is orchestrating in your life, the situations, the doors that He's opened, uh, you know, uh, then you know uh, you're not going to get into what God has for you. Okay, um, but if you're afraid and you may not step into what God is orchestrating for your life, you know, the point I want to make here is, uh, you know, God will orchestrate circumstances, God will open doors, but you've got to walk through those uh, doors. God is not going to come and give you a lift, okay? He's not going to give you a lift. You have to step in, you have to walk in it. But if you're fearful and you stay where you are, then you're going to miss out on something that God has orchestrated in your life you're going to miss out on the good things that god has orchestrated for your life now all of us you know our prayer is god you know i want my life to be blessed i want my life to be good uh and you know or you're praying god give me something better than this job give me something good you know um and uh you know, God orchestrates uh, situations. He brings about the good. But you need to remember that those good always comes with a price. Okay, nothing comes free. Okay, and um, uh, you need to press in. There will be responsibilities, challenges, but you need to press in and do what God is asking you to do. You have to work hard. Okay, um, one man of God says this. When God wants to bless you, he sends people to you. When God wants to protect you, he takes people away uh, from you. Okay, somebody wants to join this call. Let me see who that is. JL. I don't know why I want to join the class now. Okay, uh, we'll continue. Okay. Um, so one man of God says this, you know, uh, God wants to bless you. He sends people to you. When God wants to protect you, he takes people away from uh, you. So, you know, God is positioning people, places and things to help you walk. Uh, but you and I need to discern those circumstances and we need to respond likewise. You know, sometimes as Christians, we are in this uh, under this impression that if God is orchestrating situations and circumstances in our life, it's going to be easy. Um, it, you know, it's 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 going to be sweet. Uh, only then it's going to be God. Not necessarily. Sometimes the circumstances that God orchestrates in our lives can be challenging. Uh, you know, um, just take for example, if you need to drink grape juice, what do you need to do? You need to crush the grapes okay uh, i'm not talking about wine uh, <laughs> not advocating about wine i'm talking about grape juice okay so don't get me wrong so if you want to grape juice then what you need to do you have to crush the grapes okay so um sometimes the circumstances in our life are like that you know it will crush us a bit they will be challenging they'll be tough they'll be hard uh, but it will be of lasting value um um, so don't, uh, you know, get rid of this notion that everything that God has for us is going to be very easy in life. He's going to make it easy for us. No, sometimes God is going to stretch us a bit. And, you know, only when he stretches us a bit, you know, we can increase in our 
capacity. He stretches us, you know, so that uh, it can increase our capacity. Just for example, you know, when a woman uh, uh, conceives, you know, it stretches the muscles uh, and this, you know, her stomach muscles uh, for her, for her to help accommodate that baby in the different uh, trimesters in her uh, pregnancies. And so there is a stretch, and that's when she's able to accommodate that uh, baby in her stomach and give birth uh, to a baby. So God stretches us. And if we are not willing to stretch, uh, you know, uh, you know, he cannot increase our uh, capacity. Okay. Uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 to 11. You know, we're not going to read all of this, but it just talks about, you know, uh, how we should not, uh, 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 you know, um, despise the chastening of um, of God uh, or be discouraged when he rebukes us because uh, verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 12 says, the Lord chastens and uh, scourges every son uh, whom he receives. Okay, so what does it mean that God chastens us or chastens us? It simply means that, you know, uh, God lovingly corrects us, rebukes us, as a loving father corrects his child or his son or his daughter. You know, a father, a parent corrects their children because they don't want them to do what they're doing, the wrong thing, get into wrong behavior. Sorry, I need to admit the student, JL. I don't know who JL is, but uh, hello, JL. I don't know who this JL is. Are you in class? Hello, JL. I just saw these initials and I admitted you into class. Is this the right class that you're supposed to join? Can you please uh, help in answering? Hello, JL. Are you there? Who is JL? Uh, if you're not able to answer, then I'll have to remove you from the call. Is that some Bible college student? No, ma'am. No? Okay. Okay. Oh, he's from the e-learning option. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so Hebrews uh, 12, uh, chapter 12, looking at, you know, what does it mean uh, to chasten, it simply means, you know, when a, love, a father is loving and correcting his child, you know. Um, so how does God uh, chasten us or correct us? He corrects us through his word, okay. It's also the Holy Spirit that uh, corrects us, that helps us, that guides us, that teaches us, uh, who teaches us, sorry. And also God can use people around us who speak the wisdom of God to us and lead us and tell us what is right and wrong. And fourthly, you know, it could also be that God orchestrates circumstances around us uh, to correct us, to guide us, um, and to lead us in the right path, okay? Um, now, sometimes uh, some of the circumstances that we face or not all circumstances are from God. It's not all circumstances that we have in life are orchestrated by God. Some of them can be a result of our own wrong choices. Um, and it's not because of what God is doing in our life. Um, you know, so we need to be very, very careful about that. And one example is given here, uh, we read in scripture is Deuteronomy uh, uh, chapter 8 verses 1 
tell. Now, just uh, you know, uh, backing up a little uh, to understand Deuteronomy chapter eight verses one to ten, we see that you know God brought the Israelites out of the uh, uh, the land of Egypt, and they are in the wilderness of Tan. And um, you know, um, God tells them, uh, tells Moses to choose twelve leaders, uh, what twelve spies, to go and spy the land of Canaan. So they go spy the land of Canaan for forty days. They come back, and ten of the twelve spies, uh, you know, spread a false report. And uh, the people of Israel, the entire community of the people of Israel, when they listen to the ten spies and say, you know, hey, we can't go and take the land of Canaan. Those people are like giants. You know, we will lose the battle. Uh, and they all started crying out and said, did God bring us in the wilderness to die here? So, uh, you know, they said, okay, let's choose a leader. We don't want Moses as a leader. We'll choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Imagine they want to go back to uh, slavery. And, um, uh, you know, God was um, his, you know, he was so saddened at their whole reaction and, you know, their spirit of unbelief and uh, the lack of trust in him. And so God says, you know, just like you have spoken, uh, you know, you will all fall dead in this desert. Uh, and so he punishes them for 40 years. He says, you will not enter the promised land. None of you who have complained and grumbled and murmured, but your children who are, you know, uh, 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 20 and below will enter the, the land of Canaan. And of course, Caleb and Joshua, the other two spies who trusted in God. Um, so we see that, you know, God punished them. 40 days they went to spy the land of Canaan. So for each day, one year. Okay, so 40 years they had to keep on roaming around in the wilderness. But we see in spite of them, uh, you know, uh, grumbling, murmuring, complaining, and their unbelief in God, we read in later on, this happens in Numbers chapter 12, what the incident I just mentioned about the 12 spies, you know, uh, we read later on in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 to 10, that in spite of God, you know, punishing them, you know, um, we see that, you know, God um, took care of them in those 40 years in the wilderness, okay? Uh, God led them to the wilderness. He was a pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. He fed them with manna. He gave them water from the rock. You know, they had, uh, he even sent them a KFC, uh, you know, in the form of quails. Uh, he did wonderful things for them. He took care of them. You know, even their clothes did not wear out. And the Reebok Nike shoes that they were wearing, you know, did, uh, you know, lasted them for long. I think the company was great company and you know the Reebok and Nike and Puma and all of those in those days I'm just kidding there was no Reebok Puma and all of those in those days they just walked barefoot or they just had you know their own self-made uh, footwear um, and there was no KFC as well okay um, but um, you know God just took care of them so wonderfully in spite of them you know, uh, you know, not trusting in God in spite of their unbelief, okay? So was it God's plan for them to walk in the wilderness for uh, 40 years? Absolutely not, you know? Did God take care of them well uh, when they were uh, out of God's uh, plan and purpose uh, for their lives? Absolutely, yes. So we can't say that God orchestrated this 40 years of them walking in the wilderness. It was because of their own wrong choice, their unbelief, their lack of trust, their murmuring and um, grumbling. Okay. Uh, but did God take care of them? Absolutely. Yes. He took care. He's true to his promises. He's true to his nature. He cannot go back on in his nature of being loving, gracious, compassionate and merciful. And he's also forgiving. So, you know, if we keep our heart open to God, then he will still take care of us. He will still bring us to the land of promise. So if we repent of our sins and ask him for forgiveness, you know, he will still bring us to the land of um, promise. And uh, another thing that we need to keep in mind, even as we are uh, recognizing God orchestrating situations in our life, is sometimes that, you know, the devil can oppose us, okay? The devil can bring about, uh, you know, people in our lives who can hurt us, who can stop us, who can hinder, who can distract God's plan and purposes for our life and take us away from God's plan and purpose for our life. And as those times, we need to discern. We need to discern, is God working? 
you know, uh, in this uh, circumstances or situation, or is it because of my own actions, or is the enemy doing it? Then if you discern that it's God working, then you must respond, go for it, go with it, you know. Um, it, and if it's a result of your own actions, then we need to step in and ask God for forgiveness and correct ourselves and do what is right. And then God will change the situations for us. And if it is the devil working, you know, we need to oppose the devil. We need to speak God's word. We need to come against him with the sword of the spirit, the, you know, helmet of salvation, the, uh, the breastplate of righteousness and, uh, you know, faith to stand against him, oppose him. And, uh, you know, we need to press in to fulfill God's plan and purpose for our um, lives. Okay. So this is about... Uh, uh, the seventh, sorry, the sixth um, guidepost to recognize, uh, you know, uh, the circumstances that God orders in our life or recognize the circumstances or uh, how God orchestrates situations and circumstances in our lives. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, go ahead. Somebody has a hand up. You can go ahead. Unmute your mic and ask, please. Or did you put up your hand by accident? Okay. There are no questions. We'll move on to the next guidepost. Recognize godly counsel and wisdom. Okay. So, you know, uh, we can also know God's plan and purpose uh, in our lives uh, when God, uh, you know, sends or, or opens doors for us to meet the right people uh, or uh, gets us into contact with right people who will advise us, who will instruct us in God's ways. Now, counsel is basically advice, instruction, and sharing of knowledge that uh, you know, people have that has been given to them. Uh, counsel, <clears throat> sorry, counsel is not, sorry, it's not a command. Um, you know, when somebody counsels you, uh, they're not commanding you. They're not giving you the 11th commandment, so to say. They're just guiding you in already what, you know, God has revealed to them, taught them, or the skills and the expertise that they uh, have, okay? Now, you can receive counsel from godly people. Uh, so godly counsel is given to you by a man or woman who has a deep, strong, firm, you know, tested relationship with God. Uh, based on their knowledge of God's word, the revelations, the truth that they have received, uh, their own experience in life. So they are just speaking based on their own knowledge, their own experience, and they're giving you uh, counsel. Okay. So a good classic example of godly counsel is given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 10 to 14. Um, uh, we're not going to read the entire uh, scripture passage, but, you know, uh, just want to highlight a few things here. Um, now, you know, in verse 10, Paul says, you know, he's talking to married people, and he says, I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Okay, so he's saying, he's sending married people, I want you to do this, this, this. And he says, uh, you know, I command, and then he goes on to say, it's not I, but the Lord. Okay, so he's saying, uh, you know, this is a, 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 a counsel that is coming from God and not from me. And then look at verse 12. He says, but to the rest, I, not the Lord. So, which means he's saying now, I am saying, you know, so this is a godly counsel that's coming from me, and this is not directly coming from God. And then moving on to verse 25, where he's talking about virgins. He says, I have no commandment from the Lord, uh, sorry, which means that God hasn't told me anything about what I'm talking now to virgins or writing to virgins. Yet, he says, you know, I give judgment, okay? Meaning, he's saying, I'm giving you some advice. I'm giving you some advice as one whom the Lord and his mercy has made 
trustworthy. So what Paul is basically saying is that, you know, what I'm about to say is not what the Lord is saying, like he mentions in verse 10, but he's saying this is godly counsel coming from me. It's something that I am saying. And he's saying that I'm saying this because I'm confident to give you this kind of advice or counsel because I believe that I'm somebody who God has trusted with this responsibility and somebody who God has called me as trustworthy. So Paul is basically giving this advice and counsel because he's confident uh, and he's speaking because he's saying that I'm confident that I am revealing the very heart of God and I'm confident that God trusts me to give you this advice. And this is godly counsel. Okay. So, um, um, you know, um, uh, this is what godly counsel means. So when we go to people, uh, you know, it's not necessarily God speaking to them and telling them. Sometimes they can hear from God and say, hey, I don't know what to say now, but I'll hear from God and come back. And when I get a word, I can say. But sometimes it's godly counsel because they they know, they're confident, uh, you know, they're trusted with the responsibility and God has called them trust. Uh, you know, they know the very heart of God regarding this matter. So they are revealing it to uh, you. Okay. Um, So Amun says that, you know, man does not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, it's about spiritual or physical, okay? Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse um, 3. Yes, it is more uh, in the spiritual sense that he is uh, talking about, yes. You know, it's about trusting um, God. And it's about speaking the right things. Yes, it's more spiritual. Yeah. So we'll move on. Um, um, so, you know, God can use, um, uh, you know, godly people to direct you into the plans and the purposes that he has for you. But even as he does it, we need to be humble enough uh, to receive godly counsel in our lives. Okay. Uh, one example is uh, uh, in the case of Moses. Now, you know, Moses, um, we read in Exodus chapter 18, you know, Moses is leading the people of the, uh, the whole nation of Israel, so many people. And we, when we know that when we have two or more people, there's always some kind of problem, some kind of issue, some kind of confusion, some kind of disagreement, even if it's two people just living together. Okay. So, you know, uh, imagine there was a multitude of these people and how many problems. So they're all coming to Moses and Moses is sitting there from sunrise to sunset, you know, listening to all the problems of these people and uh, giving them, you know, got the uh, solutions, uh, counsel, guidance, or uh, judging their cases. And so, you know, Moses' uh, father-in-law, Jethro, comes and he sees, you know, Moses has no time for family, no time for children, and he's sitting here whole day and he thinks if Moses is continuing to do this, he's going to go crazy, or one day he's just going to drop down dead very soon. So he gives him an advice and says, you know, find out leaders, out of all the people, appoint some of them as leaders, and then, you know, have the people go to them to resolve uh, problems. But if there are big issues where these leaders cannot solve, then, you know, they can bring it to you and you can advise them. But your responsibility is just to pray and inquire from the Lord and tell the people what to do and also teach them. Okay. So, you know, Moses, um, you know, was humble enough to take his father-in-law's advice okay uh he takes his advice he does what he uh, says he's not he wasn't arrogant he was not proud to receive counsel from jethro and from his father-in-law and it really helped him to lead the people of god okay so you and i also must be humble to receive counsel now there are three kinds of counsels that we can um get or give you know uh we can receive counsel from people based on their own experience, their knowledge, and their own skill. Okay, we can receive counsel from uh, the Word of God, and we can also receive counsel from uh, or, or through prophetic um, inspiration. Okay, now 
the first and the last needs to be tested through the word of God. So if you receive counsel from, you know, uh, godly counsel from people, we need to always test it, testify it, prove it, uh, uh, in going back to the word of God, reading it, and, and you know, God, the word of God just speaking to us. And also prophetic, we, we saw that, you know, we need to test all prophecies that we received, so we go back to the word of uh, God, okay? Um, then, you know, the, so the first and the last have to be evaluated. Um, you know, sometimes we need to be careful whom you're receiving counsel from. You know, um, uh, don't go to people who are always saying and yes to you for everything, very sweet, very nice. But, you know, there are some people who will be willing to tell you on your face, you know, hey, what you're doing is wrong. This is not right. This is not godly. This is not what God has for you. This is not in line with what scripture is saying. So, you know, sometimes we don't want to hear such people out. We always want to hear people who tell us, yes, this is right. This is good. You know, our peers, our friends uh, who have no much skill and knowledge in that field, but it's important for us to go to people who tell us on our face what is right, what is wrong, and uh, you know, humble ourselves enough to take counsel and set our, uh, our paths um, right. Okay, uh, and also we need to know who to go for which for which problem. For example, if you're having a problem with your stomach, you don't go to a mechanic, right? Only if you have a problem with your car or your two wheeler, you go uh, to a mechanic. You know, in the same way. Uh, if you have a problem with your with your, uh, with something with your business, you know you don't go to um, a doctor, but you go to uh, you know a businessman or a businesswoman who's established in that field, and you hear from them. So it's important who you go to, uh, you know. And uh, sometimes we, uh, you know, think that hey, I have a problem with the uh, with my business, so. You know, uh, 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 so let me go to this uh, uh, to this pastor. Well, you can go to the pastor, but if the pastor has no knowledge of business, then he's not going to be able to help you. Now, the pastor is, uh, you have a problem with your stomach. The pastor is not a doctor who can help you. He'll say, hey, you have to go and meet your doctor and, you know, maybe do a scan or check or whatever. So, you know, uh, we can't run for everything. We can't run to a godly person sometimes we also can go to uh, people of this world you know if it's it's in the business field somebody who's a good businessman is not a believer who's not godly or your you know with your uh, investments or finance you know you got to go, you go to a person who is uh, uh, not a godly person uh, you know you go to them for counsel but you know you you say, hey, that's what you're saying is not right. The scripture tells us in Psalm chapter 1, verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, or stand in the path of sinners, or sits in the streets of the scornful. So we can't take advice from ungodly people. Uh, well, you know, we can draw out of their skills and experience, but if the business person, businessman who is not godly says, gives you some good direction, you can take those some good directions. But if he says, you know, you can go to this person, you know, I bribed him, uh, you know, so much of money and he got my papers done. So you can go to him. I just put in a word, you know, you can just pay him some money under the table and it'll get done. So, you know, you can leave that part, but there are some good things that he's given you which you can use for your business or for your, you know, when you're looking for your finances or for whatever area. You know, for example, you go to a doctor. The doctor is not a believer, but, uh, you know, you yet you go to a doctor and a doctor says, you know, uh, you know, I don't think this sickness is, is going to last for many uh, months, days, as you have to live with it for the rest of your life, and you cancel that in the name of Jesus. You don't believe that. You decrease, you you know there is a problem. It is it's something that is a terminal sickness, but you declare the word of God. You stand and you declare healing and believe for healing uh, in your life. So you go to the right person, uh, receive the right counsel from the right person, take the right things, and of course you know you always uh, confirm it with the word of God. Okay. So we'll stop here. We just have one more minute. We'll take any questions you have, and then we will look at, you know, the last word thing about prophetic counsel based on prophetic inspiration, the next class. Anyone has any questions?
No questions, anyone? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, we'll end today's class. Thank you all for joining today's class. I hope you received some valuable insights. Uh, please put them into practice. Uh, please, can I have a can I have timetable? Oh, you mean? Sorry, I didn't get what you're saying. Timetable. Oh, what is your next class? Can somebody help? Uh, Identity. Identity. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't. I can ask the uh, 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 the principal or the ad administrator to you know email you your uh, uh, the timetable. Okay, if that's okay. I, I got your name. I'll just quickly send her a text message and she can help you. Okay, thank you everyone for joining class today. Have a blessed weekend and God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.